Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy. In today's video, we are joined with my main man, Tyler Moss, at Tyler Moss NFL on Twitter. Now, if you guys watched me and Tyler last year during draft season, you've seen a video like this where we talk about the NFL draft, and we will continue to do that after the season ends. But today, we're going to do a Miami Dolphins mock draft because we are both fans of the Dolphins. There will be other teams that we talk about as well in this video, I'm sure. And then there's going to be other videos for other teams probably in the future. Uh, this is pretty much what the channel will be like once the NFL season ends obviously the season is still going but there's not as many videos i can make on a weekly basis like the trade video is gone because we're in week 16 of the season so this is just what you guys are going to be getting a lot of in the off season so i figured i would show you guys now and then if you enjoy it and you want to continue to stay subscribed or if you're new and you want to subscribe make sure you do that because me and tyler do all types of draft videos in the off season so tyler do you have anything to say before we get into our dolphins draft here yeah, listen, you took all the energy to subscribe. Why would you take all that energy to unsubscribe? Who are you? Some kind of sadist? Come on, don't do that. Come on, come um, on, man. What you can do, though, is go to my Twitter or maybe uh, down below in the uh, description. description. Maybe we'll throw it in there. Who knows? Um, you can go vote for Notorious for YouTube of the year. Vote for Tyler Moss NFL for Twitter of the year. That means a lot to me. Um, go vote for the Fantasy Content Creator Awards. Is a little thing I'm running. Uh Nick is not winning for YouTube of the year right now. And that's a disgrace. Hey. You go ahead and go down there. You vote for him. You vote for me for Twitter of the year. Cause it's a tight race for me. I'm trying to pull that baby home. Big thing. Just spend, spend a few minutes. You don't have to answer every question. Just answer <laughs> those two, put our names, submit done, done. Maybe you got some other guys you want to, that's it. Do it. If you want to, whatever, whatever. And then you're done. You've done your rings, go home, you know, you know, have a nice whack off, talk to the kids, talk to the wife, call it a day. Notorious fantasy YouTube of the year. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So now at number one, we have the Jaguars. I'm going to sim it, obviously, but that's very funny because fuck the Jets. I'm all right. Embarrassing that they embarrassing that they won that game. So the first five picks of the draft are pretty simple. Pretty much the same things every single time you look at this. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Jamar Chase. Never mind. This is completely different. Uh, Penny Sewell and then Michael Parsons now or Micah Parsons. Sorry. Penny Sewell. I feel like there is no way in fuck the uh, the Bengals do not take Sewell. Yeah. Um kind of wild i i did a mock where i had a, a random obviously all the picks when i did a dolphins mock by myself um justin fields fell all the way to five which meant that the falcons didn't take micah parsons and it meant he fell into our lap uh for the dolphins which i think would have been a fantastic pick for us didn't work out this way this time so i think it's fairly easy we need help uh when it comes to the wide receiver position and i say Let's go ahead and get a guy that Tua is quite familiar with. His name is Jalen Waddle. You can see him on the board. Yes, I think he's better than Devontae Smith. That's strictly just because Devontae Smith is really the only guy uh, outside of Mechie, but Mechie's not as a season to the system uh, as uh, Devontae Smith would be. Waddle gets hurt. He obviously steps into that role, but Waddle is obviously the more fantastic, more electric guy, better returner. He's going to provide a lot of up-end talent for the Miami Dolphins. I'm plenty excited to take Jalen Waddle here. Um, to us, familiarity with him, too. I, I say it's a no-brainer. Yeah, to me, I, I agree. I mean, the Dolphins, they're just – they just don't have the wide receiver core that we need to help Tua out. Some of these guys are just right. never open. And besides Gasicki and Parker, we really have no help outside that unless Preston Williams gets healthy next year. So I agree. Uh, Jalen Waddle, you wanted Waddle, right? Yeah. Jalen waddled away, waddle waddle to the very next day is the pick yeah. here. Now, some people will talk about Devontae. What's the name? Devontae Smith. Besides Devontae that, Smith. I don't think there's anyone else besides Jamar Chase who would be considered here because I don't think the Bengals Absolutely. would take him. So, Dolphins fans may be looking for uh, Jamar Chase, but why do you prefer Waddle yeah. over Chase? It, it, it's fairly simple. When you have a quarterback who's worked with a wide receiver before, and I, I, the Bengals are not going to take him over, over Penny Sewell. I don't yeah. believe that at all. And I don't think they'll take him over Michael Parsons either. I say there's zero way that the Bengals take Jamar Chase. However, if you want to play why it makes sense, sure. Uh, Burrow played with them. They are fantastic together. Uh, yeah. Jamar Chase has the most 20 yard receptions in the past two years um, over any other wide receiver in college football. And something funny about that, Jamar Chase did not even play this year. So that's how <laughs> electric him and Burrow were together. So I guess it makes sense, but no doubt in my mind, you're going with a guy who two has played before, played with before. So yeah, roll him out there. I love it. Jalen Waddle, fantastic pick here for the Dolphins. Even though the wide receiver class is so deep, you could wait. Um, let's go ahead and get to a guy he's worked with before. I mean, honestly. Thanks, yeah, Tyler. no, that 
That makes too much sense. Yeah, and thank you to the Texans. And we just got a trade offer, which we're not going to accept. That's hilarious, though. Did you hear that? The phone ringed in my ear. So we're not going to accept this. So it doesn't even really matter. But Wait, do we get a third round pick just to move up? To move up? Yeah, no, but we're not going to do this because I don't think this is realistic. This makes zero that's sense. Not, that's not. They move back and we get a pick. Okay, no, that doesn't make sense. Don't do that. That's it. Uh, the draft network, y'all are silly. So I don't want to play that game. Um, I guess yeah, we do tra- trades on. We do have the premium. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I'm getting another phone call from the Chargers. We don't want anything from that nasty team. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, amen. And dude. the Steelers, get out of here as well. And the Panthers, Jesus, everyone wants this pick. So with that said, I'll just recap real quick. Uh, Patrick Sertain and then Rosu and then Pay. Uh, Farley, oh. Zach Wilson, oh, fucking Mormon Mahomes slash Mormon Manziel, the GOAT. Trey mm-hmm. Lance, Asai, Kosami. These guys' names, they're just uh, very complicated. Smith, Darsaw, this guy's name's too complicated. Bateman, Slater, and Horn. I will learn how to say their names correctly as we get on more into the draft season because I don't really watch college football, obviously, as much as Tyler does because I don't like it as much, if I'm being honest with you. But I do like watching to see how good these guys would be in the NFL. So the Dolphins do have two picks in the first round, obviously projected pick 21, but that's some cap because our real first-round pick We'll be in pick 32 when we win the Super Bowl. So, with that said, now we are at 21, and I don't know how in the fuck Kyle Pitts is still here. That seems to me to be impossible, in my opinion. I think the uh, I think Alabama would – not Alabama. Uh, I think uh, the Patriots would probably end up picking them. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, and, and otherwise I'd just say draft fits, but we're not going to do that. Um, we're going to play fair here. It's very unrealistic that he's going to be here. I, I'm, not, I'm not even going to play – the fantasy that he is and go ahead and take him because it just doesn't make sense. Kyle Pitts seriously could go top 10. He's better than, I think he's better than Hawkinson and Fanta's prospects and they went top 10. Um, I think he's by far better than both those two. Um, If the top five teams weren't so desperate for other things. And and that's the thing, the team that's like the least desperate for a position of need is going to take Kyle Pitts because he literally is different. He, he, he's developed blocking this year. Uh, He's had fantastic receiving abilities, obviously He's dominant, Um, but I'm just going to pretend he doesn't exist. And I'm going to drop Wyatt Davis here. Uh, Interior offensive lineman from the Ohio State, an excellent guard play. Uh, It's it's fairly clear that Miami has decided, you know what, we're going to play every single one of our offensive linemen uh, that we drafted (laughs) this past year. Uh, Austin Jackson has had IR issues, um, but he's playing now. I, I I have done some other mocks where I've had the Dolphins uh, draft a uh, tackle because I think that Jackson, with how young he is, could very much uh, slide in uh, on an interior guard kind of position. I think that'd work yeah. for him again. He's, he's so young that I just see it as, as something that could definitely be a thing for him. Um, we obviously have Robert Hunt playing uh, as well, and he's been fantastic, a very, very strong, consistent guy for uh, – for the Miami Dolphins this year. And then we have the kid out of Georgia, which now I feel like a terrible Dolphins fan because I just forgot his name. Um, and I, now I'm trying to just look it up. And that, that that's just sad. But give me a second. Sad. His name. Yeah, it, it is. Because I, I literally lost his name because I'm having it like when I'm making this pick. But anyways, all the Dolphins seriously need is just, I mean, you could go with a center, uh, but also a guard because that, that, that's really just all they have left. Uh, along that line, they got to get, I mean, they have three rookies currently playing, let them develop. That's fine. Um, Solomon Kinley, Jesus, Tyler, come on. Uh, so there you go. Three young offensive line that are currently starting for them. Uh, you have flowers currently at the left guard position, which would be where I'd necessarily see a Wyatt Davis sliding in. I see no problem with, uh, with Eric flowers, probably switching the right tackle position. Maybe they put Austin Jackson over there. Um, yeah, but I think Wyatt Davis is a fantastic pick. You have two now growing guards, a growing line that's looked pretty solid uh, against New England, uh, at least last week. Uh, we'll see how it fares against Vegas. But it, it looks like a really good line that's developing well. So I like Wyatt Davis adding to it. Yeah, I, I think the Dolphins do need more offensive line. Like you said, we do have a lot of – we have a very young offensive line. Flowers is not very good at all, in my opinion. That guy is just – not the greatest and getting a young guy like Wyatt Davis, obviously don't know too much about him, but getting a young guy in that line who can protect the Ohio state university, probably a great man, just like Dwayne Haskins throwing money on some strippers. Shout out to Wyatt Davis first round pick for the Miami dolphins. Now we have a nice pick here. This kind of how they envisioned us uh, drafting some nice offensive linemen here, build the fucking wall. 
So I like that. I picked a build a wall. Uh, after that was Terrence Marshall Jr., the Eric Stokes, Zaven Collins, Kyle Pitts to the Jags. That's beautiful. Uh, Ojali, uh, oh, yeah. Tufele, Kyle Trask, the GOAT, uh, Sean Wade, Liam Eichenberg, Vera Tucker. We're getting another fucking phone call from the Dallas oh, Cowboys. Gross. Get those motherfuckers off the phone. Uh, Darion Kendrick, Chris Olave, Nick Bolton, related to Troy Bolton, I've heard. Asante yeah. Samuel, I've heard of that guy. And Jalen O or Jason Owe. Nick, so I'm now gonna you, I'm gonna let you just take him. Just take him because you know you want him and because I want oh, him. Too. I know I want him too. But so thus far in the draft, we've got Jalen Waddle and Wyatt Davis. If you guys have been skipping around the draft. So here to me, this is a smash pick. Now the issue with it is with the way Salvin Ahmed has been playing and with the way Gaskin has been playing. I would not mind if the Dolphins missed here and did not take Najee Harris, but personally, based on what I've seen of him, that's who you want, obviously, right? Yeah, uh, him or him or Leatherwood. If you were like, no, I, I don't know if I want to take him. I, I love Ahmed and I love Gaskin. I love those two as well. You're seeing how well running backs can do in Brian Flores' system when they're undrafted. Yeah. <laughs> you get Najee Harris and and listen, he's going to run a 4-6 and people are going to be like, I got to lower him on my board don't because he's still dominant he, you just yeah. need a power runner solomon kinley fantastic on the run block and it's like now i'm going to talk about him because i fucking remembered his name nice job tyler wyatt davis fantastic on the run block both those two as your inner guards Najee harris up the middle fantastic veteran ted karras gonna probably i think he's on a one-year deal they'll resign him or maybe they'll draft a center and roll with him uh but you got a really really good run uh, st- run line. Uh, it's why these undrafted guys have been so well. And Brian Flores, obviously, has has counted on the run as well. Not that there's a doubt into it. It's just, hey, this this team, they want to establish the run. It's how they do it. They get out leads early, and their defense plays great. And then you need to run the ball. You get Najee Harris here, and I, I still believe that Gaskin and Ahmed will provide value. Najee Harris not perfectly seasoned when it comes to the pass catching. But as far as a three down back could potentially work out to be getting Najee Harris here in the second round, when you already have a star receiver, he could still catch out of the backfield. Uh, you got a guard. I mean, you're building the offense when you spent so much capital on the defense last year. Yeah. I'm good going with Najee Harris here. Yeah. I'm not trying to make the same mistake we made last year. I wanted to draft Jonathan Taylor last year. And obviously we didn't do that. We've seen how Taylor has played this season. Don't try to mess up on that again. Shout out to Najee Harris for running a train on Tyler's Florida Gators last week. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. That was the best game they were going to play all year was against Florida. So I'll stand by that one. Also, shout out to the Texans for giving us not just their one pick, they're also their second two pick. pick. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. All don't right. Know. Oh, my boy Rondell Moore got drafted. All right. Let's see. You're a big, you're um, big Rondell Moore fan? I'm a huge Rondell Moore guy. To uh, the Lions, no less. Just to ruin that guy's career. And it feels yes. bad. Tough for him. All right, so now we are back on the board, and we have, obviously, Jalen Waddle, Wyatt Davis, and a Najee Harris. So we have a nice Alabama sandwich to Mr. Wyatt Davis. He so, fell. Oh, he fell. Alex okay. Leatherwood. Do you All think right, there's any so, chance he would actually be here is the real question. So here's the thing. Um, no. <laughs> no. no I mean, I'll be good. honest. Like, he won't be here, and we can play the game. But I also don't think Mac Jones is going to be here either. So it's just like, I, I don't know um things are kind of messed up we could play the game and just say you know let's go and skip it because it it, it wouldn't really make total sense for him to be here um I mean outside of the fact that gosh he's so good I I know here's the thing with him is people don't believe uh he has the, the the ceiling of some of these other prospects in the class he may not be the uh maybe the best kind of natural guard but I don't really think that's going to be too much of an issue. I think you stick him on the left side, uh, maybe develop Austin Jackson to be a right tackle. I'm not sure. I don't know if we should do it though. Cause I really don't believe he'd be here. Okay. Yeah. Then we definitely shouldn't do it. If it seems like impossible, I mean, he's ranked 38 on the draft network. Now, again, guys, the draft network is not perfect when we're drafting no, a team not. in uh, December. They're not perfect even in April when we're trying to do this, but especially in December, there's going to be some players that are ranked very out of whack. Like you said, Mac Jones. I'm not sure if he'll be a first round pick because there seems like there'd be too many quarterbacks. Where do you think he goes? Yeah. Um, Gosh, I mean, first round, I mean, it's so? definitely possible and, and maybe, maybe second round. 
and and people are are bashing Kyle Trask, and I, I see Kyle Trask being in the first round too. It's just you can hate the prospect all you want, draft Twitter. You can hate him all you want, but he's going to go in the first round because teams believe in him. Um, and that's really all you need with with how how good I think Kyle Trask is. Just a team that'll believe in him. Uh, same with Mac Jones. Just get him volume. Uh, I'm going to go a real crazy route here, and I may get shit for it. I mean, I have two routes, and I'll, I'll let you decide, uh, but I'll talk to you about both of them. So number one route is we touch up our interior uh, our interior defensive line, and we roll with my boy Jordan Davis from Georgia. Fantastic run stuffer. Um, he'll pair well with Wilkins. Uh, we have these – we have Ogba, and we have um, – oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. The other one. Fuck me. Uh, <laughs> but we have – but both of them are not going to be uh, there long. Shaq Lawson. Um, what was that? The Shaq Lawson is that you're looking for? Yeah, Shaq Lawson. I'm a fucking moron. It's because he hurt right now. Um, but both those, plus we have Siler as well, who's been really good for us this year. Uh, the whole unit just played fantastic. And I just think you just add like an extra piece. Roquan Davis, obviously, we drafted um, late last year in Strobridge as well. So it's not really a a complete move that we go to, but it's more or less just bulking up a, a position. I feel really comfortable uh, bulking up or we can go to the exciting route and that's drafting my boy, Amon Ross St. Brown, fantastic receiver out of USC. So we, we hyped up okay. Pittman a lot last year. Um, this guy was the, uh, the dual threat to Pittman guy run on the other side. He's just as fantastic, fantastic guy. A uh, great vertical will get up. Uh, make fantastic plays for the defense. Keep on, uh, Keaton Slovis depended on him a ton this year. Uh, fantastic prospect. I'm going to do a lot of research for him for a, a project that I don't know if we're leaking yet, but for a project that we'll be doing with Nick, um, I'll be doing a lot of work on him because I think he's fantastic. I'm very excited to see what he does. Um, and I think we're, there's no way we get out of this draft without at least uh, two receivers and Again, Miami's in a really comfortable position where they're coached well, and there's real no uh, obvious positions of weakness. Um, I, I could I could genuinely see us just taking St. Brown and feeling very happy about it. He's a fantastic prospect. Um, I obviously like Kadarius Tony. We could probably wait on the position. But honestly, if, if we're being realistic and we're saying, okay, Leatherwood shouldn't be there, uh, Amon St. Brown is just fantastic, and, and I'd be plenty okay getting him. Okay, so with that said, I also said go Cox when you said USC. I'm going to say go Trojans. Don't want to sound like an idiot on here, even though they already know I am one. With that said, I think actually going the wide receiver route would probably be not the way that Flores would go, in my opinion. Now, what do I think we should do? I think we probably should draft a receiver, but Flores is a huge defense guy. Yeah, I mean, I I get it. We could use some some edge help. By edge help, we could use some edge help. What I mean by that is we need guys that are eventually going to get uh, gonna go past uh, and be the next guys up after Ogba and Lawson. Uh, yeah. Is Ogba and Lawson a permanent fix? Could we draft a guy right now? Uh, if you want to look at the edge positions, maybe I'll see a guy that I'd be interested in. But honestly, this is a position where I see Beefalo trading back. There's really nothing here that I'm like screaming for outside of Leatherwood. But honestly, it just feels like cheating going with Leatherwood. So I think if this is my draft, if this is our draft, I'm going St. Brown, feeling very comfortable, maybe touching on the guards uh, and not the guards, the edges in the uh, interior defensive line when I know the value is better for it. All right, that's fine with me. We can go with Mr. St. Brown. I'm just not too sure what Flores will do, but then again, Flores is quite the genius. So we have Mr. St. Brown out of USC brought up Michael Pittman. Is he comparable at all to Pittman or or just two guys on the same fucking team? Yeah. I mean, both used in the same way. Both got the bulk of their work um, their senior year. St. Brown, just the way he kind of meshed with Slovis was just really, really good stuff. Uh, Obviously, I have to do a lot more work. It is December. Um, By April, when we're doing our final mock drafts, I'll be saying these prospects and what they can do backwards and forwards. Uh, But just from what I've watched so far, I mean, that's just what I'm seeing. I'm just seeing a really talented player that that can dominate and get a lot of receptions and 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 do a lot of great work. Obviously, Pittman played there, kind of played in the same role. So role-wise, yes, they're fairly similar. But outside of that, uh, you want to go to all positions? I want to kind of see. Oh, after you do yeah, it. Right we can do that real quick. I just want to point out, Mac Jones, when it picks 69, nice, to the nice. Falcons. There is Very no nice. way in fuck he falls to the third round if he wins the Heisman. 
No. And, well, I don't think he'll, 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 he's in the Heisman conversation. That's, that's the thing. You don't um, think he's going to win? He could. I mean, he could. Uh, I think this is a position where we're right back into the conversation of, okay, Leatherwood decided he was going to fall all the way down the board. I'm not a huge Spencer Brown fan, but I am a huge Walker Little fan. Uh, very, very great talent um, out of Stanford. But I'm also a good Richard LeCount fan. Uh, Richie LeCount has been fantastic for Georgia. He comes up, he stuffs the run, plays great pass uh, coverage as well. Uh, great help uh, as a deep safety. But again, that run stuffing ability is very, very, very talenting. Uh, very, very eye-catching when I look at him as a prospect. I saw a lot of Georgia in, in the few years that he played. Um, if we want to be realistic, I don't think Walker Little will be there, but there's a good chance. Uh, but also, I, I don't mind taking Richie LeCount and kind of helping out that uh, that safety position. Eric Rowe has been fantastic, but Eric Rowe has yeah. also been sliding in and coming and playing slot receiver as well a good bit. Uh, you got Bobby McCain, who's kind of iffy. Kind of iffy at times. Um, that's kind of the extent. So when you have when you have Eric Rowe slide to the the corner, uh, the slot corner position, you you're kind of depending on Bobby McCain. And I, I, Bobby McCain's all right, but he's kind of a uh, transfer corner to to safety because he's not really a good coverage uh, solo corner. Uh, Byron Jones, fantastic. Xavier Howard, fantastic. Um, obviously I talked about Eric Rowe and then Igman Agane, just give him time. Uh, we've shown that he's been fantastic when he is depended on as Xavier Howard getting ejected in the Cincinnati game. Yes, it's Cincinnati. I'm aware, but they also kicked the shit out of the Steelers. Um, so it's still, it's still an NFL team with NFL guys. Igman Agane had to step up in that game. He had Tyler Boyd a few times, um, locked him up. He was very, very solid in that game. Um, I think this is an opportunity to go ahead and grab a, uh, Richie LeCount who will, lock down your future free safety um bobby mccain just i just don't know if he's really he's really the long-term answer and i think richie the count 100 is all right uh you didn't bring up nick needham as well needham has been pretty good for the dolphins <laughs> as well uh kind of just like a filling guy not like some type of world beating but i do agree i think if we have a safety that's good against the run that's one of the dolphins not strong suits in my opinion very good against the pass but against the run we've seen him get gashed like uh, when melvin gordon gassed us when we lost to denver and Ouch. so i just think being able to uh stop the run is something the dolphins really need and if this uh, richie lecount guy can do what tyler's saying which i believe in tyler we'll go ahead and draft him because that makes the most sense to yeah me. and and that's the thing eric rowe fantastic as the slot guy um and obviously very, very good coverage. And Bobby McCain is a corner turn safety. I mean, you need a true safety that can come yeah. up and stop the run and knows how to play the position. Uh, and I'm not saying Bobby can't. I'm not saying Bobby hasn't had the training to, but it's always going to be coverage first over run. And uh, LeCount can do both. And I, I love him as a pick here. Uh, obviously, we could have cheated and gone Walker Little. I, I think Walker Little could be in that position, but you go with LeCount. It's just as safe as a bet. Then you move on to your next pick. Yep. Tyler's boy, uh, Gainwell, went to the Jumbo Jets. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're just you, – I, I don't know if he's my boy. I don't know. He was just the first guy I wrote up. So don't, yeah, no. don't come after me for that yet. I'm not ready for him. He's, he's not mine yet. All right. Uh, this guy's name was Trey McKitty. There's no way in fuck I would ever draft a guy with the last name McKitty. Yeah, especially a, uh, a receiving guy from Georgia. Um, and, of course, the Texans just get an irrelevant tight end. That's just kind of funny to me. <laughs> this pick is very, very easy, and I don't even feel like we're cheating for taking him, although we kind of are because I think the draft network is way too low on him. His name's Shaka Tony. He's Shaka. got a fantastic name, and he's got fantastic edge uh, rush abilities. Um, Beeflo's going to take – he's going to take defense. I mean, as much as we're going to want him to go – and I did a mock where I did a Tyler-based mock, and I drafted two defensive players in like eight picks, and I didn't give a shit. I was like <laughs> going offense heavy. Uh, it's still oh, Beeflo. Yeah. Shaka Tony's a guy that Beeflo is going to love. Uh, great pass rushing abilities. Um, again, he's, he'll be a rotational guy. He'll be with Wilkins. He'll be he'll be with um, with Ogba, and he'll be with Lawson. Uh, but a great rotational piece in there, Shaka Tony. Let him develop. Let him eventually take over the position when Ogba or Lawson, whoever's contract comes up first. I think one's a two year, one's a three year. Um, just let him take over the starting position for the other one. Uh, I think it's a fantastic pick. I'm very, very happy locking him down. Uh, great edge presence. Let's go Shaka Tony here. All right. 
another Penn State boy to the Dolphins. Shout out to my main man, Mike Kosicki. Mike Kosicki, big God, big, big, big God. G, baby. Shaka. That's such an electric Shaka. name. Shaka. Shaka. All righty. Our next pick, do we even have another pick is the question. Yeah, we do. We, we've got a bunch scattered in here. All right, we have six picks so far through four rounds. Pretty solid for the Dolphins, obviously. Shout out again to the Houston Texans for giving us Jalen Waddle as well as Najee Harris. Huge thanks to them and Bill O'Brien uh, being a dumbass. Yeah, it's going to take a while for our pick. Um, but, yeah. yeah, if we want to kind of recap, we took four off uh, offensive pieces to start. Uh, I know that sounds crazy. That's not a B-flow thing. But I'll tell you, a B-flow thing is going ahead and taking two defensive players right after he thinks he's covered the offense. It just kind of makes sense. And Shaka Tony and LeCount are going to be two Brian Flores players he's going to be very happy with. Um, one kind of dominating the pass rush. One can definitely help with the run stuff. Um, the two wide receivers are fantastic. Waddle, obviously, a familiar uh, piece for Tua. Uh, great deep play, uh, playability. Um, and also can get the ball in short kind of passes and just let him work in open space. Uh, St. Brown going to be really, really good when it comes to things like um, kind of the mid range passes and going up one-on-one -on -one and kind of being more the alpha one where Waddle's just going to be the speed guy, the Tyreek um, kind of on your offense. And that's what you really need. And then obviously Najee Harris and, and Wyatt Davis will be working together a lot when it comes to the run game, but here's our pick. All righty, so now we're up at 195. None of these names really ring a bell for me of the guys who have been taken. But uh, we are in the sixth round, which is uh, pretty deep into the draft. So where do you think we're going to be looking here? Obviously, there's still a lot of wide receivers available. Do you think we need another okay. wide receiver, or should we go elsewhere? Uh, I want to look at linebackers real quick. Just kind of want to see who's sitting around the board right now. Uh, if there's any guy that I'm like, oh, yes, there is. But uh, is it, Mr. it could be a reach. You know what? We're going to wait for Ventrell. Um for the 203 pick, I think we could steal another kind of talented guy. Is there any position that we haven't covered that maybe you're like, hey, we should probably touch up a little bit? Honestly, probably not. I mean, maybe we do draft a quarterback in like the seventh round, right, to be a backup, but I don't know. I don't know why we would draft one now. Yeah, I, well, we're not going to draft one now, I don't think. I mean, we're going to, geez, we, we did a great job covering everything we needed. Uh, I think linebacker is definitely a position we're going to want to cover, but I think you just get Ventrell Miller and just be happy with him. Um, we can reach because, again, I, I just don't see – I'm just not even thinking. That's why I asked him, like, what do you do now if you're the Dolphins? You kind of touched up everything you needed. Um, could you look at wide receiver? I mean, the top three wide receivers right there, I'm not even interested in. I mean, Amari Rogers is all right, uh, but I feel like I don't want to touch wide receivers until maybe you get a Daz Newsome later. Uh, but that seems remarkably low for Daz Newsom. Uh, that doesn't feel realistic. You know what? Let's go ahead and draft Ventro Miller because I think this is realistically where he'll go. Um, he's been really, really great for Florida when it comes to just making it. He's a tackling machine. Uh, he's what he's really dependent on for Florida. Um, not fantastic in the pass coverage, but comes up for the run, does a fantastic job there. Uh, again, just a tackling machine, monitors the middle of the field, really good middle linebacker. Um, also can play on the outsides if you really need him to. Uh, I, I think he'll just he'll just be a good guy to have uh, in the Dolphins depth chart. Obviously, you got Van Noy. Uh, you got your Jerome Bakers playing um, kind of in the, in the what is it, the two the two outsides. I mean, Jerome plays the middle as well. Yeah. Um, but I, it, it really is just a position you kind of just need to cover up a little bit more. Um, I think Ventrell Miller's a very very solid pick there. Fairly. All fairly. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the problem with the Dolphins is after we've made these picks, like, it doesn't feel like we really have any gaping holes anymore. Like, the defense yeah. is so good. The offense really only needs, like, a receiver. Yeah. We have two. And we also got a running back. I mean, the line is definitely kind of suspect. But, again, when you build all these guys, and plus the rookies who drafted last year obviously have the potential to be very good in the future after we also mm -hmm. added Wyatt Davis. So, it doesn't really feel like there's yeah. any glaring holes with the team uh, right now. So, which way would you look right now? If you're the Dolphins. Yeah, I mean, three wide receivers seems crazy, but I mean, it, it seriously could happen. Um, I know it's like, oh shit, three receivers. That that seems kind of bold, um, especially for a Brian Flores offense. But I mean, honestly, if you're sitting here on the and you're the Dolphins, what do you do? Like, well, where do you move here? Um, Probably just draft another someone on defense. That's what Brian Flores would do. I feel like I, I feel like you're right. I mean, it's it's he went long snapper last year. Did we draft a long snapper in our mocks? No. Um, yeah, it, it just feels like yeah, he's not even there. Don't even look. 
Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at our depth chart right now, and I'm not really seeing too much of of holes. I mean, you could if you want to look at a uh, offensive tackle real quick. Um, maybe there's an offensive line piece. Oh, gosh, uh, offensive line, uh, uh, interior offensive line. Oh gosh, see that's the thing. Uh, I think we would probably just draft some random ass corner or safety or something. I, or I don't know. Like, I feel yeah, like Flores. There's no way. He yeah, we got LeCount, who's very very solid. Um, I've heard some decent things about Linderbaum uh, from Iowa. Uh, same with uh, Robert Hainsley, uh, Hainsey from uh, Notre Dame. Uh, I mean, if it feels like a Brian Flores move to just say, yeah, fuck it. Let's go ahead and grab like an interior piece, like a non-sexy pick. Because um, I think we have one more pick after this, and that's going to close up the draft. So I'm going to put this kind of in your hand. What position would you think we'll need? And I'll, I'll probably make the pick. All right. Honestly, right now, I feel like what Brian Flores would do is just draft someone on the defense. I don't think at all we would draft anyone on the offense. So I'd say probably uh, either defense, probably interior defensive line, or maybe we draft another fucking safety. Because like you said earlier, we really don't have any. Did we not go? We didn't go interior defensive line. We went safety earlier. No, we didn't draft interior defensive what line. Did we do? What did we do? Oh, we drafted Shaq and Tony for, for the edge. Well, let's look at the interior defensive line. Oh, gosh, it's not sexy. It is not good. It is actually terrible. Um, Renzo Neal? I know who that guy is. You do? Look at you. Uh, Bobby Brown, been pretty decent for Texas AM. Uh, gosh, none of these pieces are good, but he'll do it. He'll draft any of these guys. I mean, we don't have to go super in depth. I mean, it's like our six round pick. Uh, it's pretty hard to predict from fucking four months from now from when the actual draft is but oh mustafa johnson i've 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 heard a little bit about him um gosh i i i know i'm like struggling here because i just look at edge maybe because i think i think big cat bryant may be around this is he that there he is his name is fucking big cat we have to draft this guy so yeah he's kind of fun um shaka tony can play a little linebacker i i don't know i mean I guess I'm looking for a big body guy. Uh, check Tyreek Smith. What is his? What What are they weighing him? Uh, Tyreek Smith. You said he weighs. Yeah. Does it even say two sixty seven? Yeah. See, I, I just know he's a bigger body kind of edge. Maybe they bulk him up. I mean, I, I kind of like him. I wouldn't mind just taking him. Get two edge rushers. Call it a day for your for your defensive line. All right. So then we'll just take Tyreek Smith. That helps me because then then I can get a wide receiver with our last pick and call it. a a day and actually get a guy I'm confident in. All right. Yeah. That's the, the biggest problem is I feel like we're a very complete team overall. Yeah. Aside from those like glaring holes. I mean, obviously Flores just fucking, if someone gets hurt, there's just 7 million guys that we have backups ready to go, but obviously it's much better to get these other guys to add to our team. I think actually having two receivers, even though I'm not too sure about this Brown guy, you seem pretty sure about him. I'm not yeah. too sure how good he is, but I mean, Preston Williams has just been injury riddled and we really yeah. don't have a wide receiver three, obviously wide receiver two either. So, Honestly, Devontae Parker has struggled this year. Uh, just getting in, just getting yeah. open. Uh, and, and that's the thing you get uh, a St. Brown type who, if you want to click on his name, maybe you can get a little information on him. Um, okay. He's a pretty solid guy. Uh, forget is, him, dumb. A uh, uh, Saint Brown. He's already in our draft. Yeah, there was you know a little about Waddle. Um, I mean, I I think Saint Brown. And what I've watched, because <laughs> I watched the entire Oregon uh, USC Pac-12 game, and I saw a little bit of Saint Brown as well. Um, you can kind of read over what what he's uh, pretty good with. Obviously, he's got um, some dynamic ability. He, I I think he's going to be very very good uh, in coverage as well. Uh, not in coverage. I'm an idiot. Uh, but in in the one on ones, um, I, I think it's just dynamic playmakers is what you want. You get yourself Waddle. You get yourself Najee Harris. You get yourself St. Brown. And what that's going to do is change your offense because there's just not dynamic pieces on this offense. Mike Kosecki probably the best dynamic piece, and that's saying a lot. If you want to look at all <laughs> positions, yeah. Um, about it. Very dynamic. God, gross. I refuse to take Marco <laughs> Malcolm Wilson. Perry. Very dynamic. Marco Wilson there, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's the thing. When your most dynamic pieces are just like fun, like uh, quarterback turn wide receiver guys, like um, Tannehill type your people. Malcolm Perry's and, and your Lynn Bowden's, that's how you know there's just kind of an issue with your offense. 
you need pieces. You get two fun ones there. And I'm going to go ahead and add, if you go to the wide receiver position, I think Daz Newsom is going to be my guy. But um, to Marion Terry, he just sounds sounds like a Brian Flores kind of fun guy. Uh, click Daz. Daz. Oh, shit, you were just hovering over him. You're doing great. I got uh, Daz Newsom. Yeah, so both – see, that's the thing. Both Daz and you can click Terry now. Just fast guys, um, get in open space, cause headaches for, for defenses. Um, gosh, Terry just looks so good. I mean, Terry could be our return guy. I mean, honestly, you could draft Terry just to be the return guy, uh, and you don't have to worry about hurting Waddle. Um, I'm good with him or Newsom. You can kind of pick your poison, I guess. Uh, both kind of the same type receiver. Uh, even though the height difference is, is really remarkable. I thought Daz was a little taller, uh, 5'11 to 6'4. But 6'4 Terry, he's a, he's kind of a thin guy for being 6'4. Uh, he's got a lot of speed, pretty electric for Florida State last year. Um, Josh, if you watch Florida State games this year, congratulations. Yeah. You're one of the few. Um, both <laughs> are very, very fun picks. I don't think Daz will be here. Uh, I don't even know if Terry would be here. But we're going to go ahead and take one of them just to make our draft look better. Okay. So we're going to go with uh, Mr. Terry over here. Ooh, uh, kill Terry. Do it to him. See, that's the thing. I, I also love, and, and obviously the draft's over, but um, if, if the draft stock starts looking more correct and we don't have Daz Newsom and uh, Tamari and Terry sitting at us, uh, a guy like Trevon Grimes, and even though he's sitting in the seventh round, fantastic kind of pick, uh, pick there for the Dolphins. He'd be a, a really good outside receiver, not really much of the gadget guy, but a guy like a Dante Parker type where you just trust him in the one-on-one -on -one coverage and he can make spec catches for you, uh, can get up vertically, really, really good receiver for Florida. I've done a lot of research on him. Um, very exciting to see him come out as a prospect. But I think this is a great draft. If you want to kind of run through it, I'll let you go ahead. All right, so our two first-round picks, obviously, at six from the Houston Texans. I That could get a little bit higher, but I think we're locked in to be a top 10 pick based on what I've read, so that's great. So Jalen Waddle, wide receiver out of Alabama. Uh, I think he may even be able to be there at 10, maybe not, though. But I still think we'd probably go with a receiver in the first round. Uh, after that, we went with Wyatt Davis, interior offensive lineman out of the Ohio State University. Our second round begins with Najee Harris, running back of the Alabama Crimson Tide. We also selected Amon Ra, whatever the hell this guy's name is, St. Brown, the GOAT, wide receiver out of USC, uh, Richard LeCount, the third. I love guys with the third out of uh, Southern Georgia. And then we got Shaka out of uh, Penn State, Ventrell Miller out of Florida, Tyreek Smith out of Ohio, and Mr. Terry out of Florida State. So we got a lot of guys, a lot of names, a lot of guys who are going to be very good for the Miami Dolphins. So I think that uh, that just about does it, Tyler, unless you want to talk about some more about any of these guys or anything that's come to your mind here. No, we talked a lot about each guy kind of in the review. I think this is what the Dolphins do. Uh, if the Dolphins want to be smart, they got to get offensive dynamic pieces. I know Brian Flores loves his defense, but he's still a smart guy, and he's going to go with the uh, with the picks that he knows is going to help his team the most. Defense looks really, really set right now. I'd say it's definitely top 10 in the league, um, top five arguably. Uh, the secondary is fantastic. I think what we did here is we got a safety that can help come down for the run, uh, kind of something that we kind of need right now, a more dynamic safety than Bobby McCain. Um, you also get yourself a uh, kind of more tackling kind of machine in Ventrell Miller. Um, you get your uh, Tariq Smith and uh, Shaka Tony. Shaka Tony really um, to just be, a, 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 yeah, fantastic guy um, when it comes to just passing, uh, pass rushing. Nice job, Tyler. Um, and then you just get dynamic offensive pieces. Help two out. You got a rookie who the defense has helped him out, uh, but he just got no guys that are open. You, you got to get guys open for him. And you got a bunch that can do it for him in, in St. Brown, Waddle, uh, Najee Harris as well. And, and we picked Marion Terry at the end as well, which I, I don't think he'll be in the seventh round. Um, but there's a lot of talented receivers in this class. So go ahead and capitalize on it. Uh, this is a very, very good draft for the, for the Dolphins, and I hope it happens. I agree. And me and Tyler are known sharps of the Miami Dolphins. We both predicted that Tua will be drafted. No one else thought that, actually, I heard. So uh, pretty sharp, actually. Wow. Tack. Pretty genius over here. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. I hope you guys did end up enjoying again. This kind of the content you're going to be seeing on the channel in the off season. Obviously, there will still be some fantasy stuff, but fantasy stuff isn't very relevant in February when you're trying to draft your team in August. So thank you guys for watching. Tyler, do you have anything else to uh, say here? Follow Tyler again on Twitter and check out 
Hopefully I remember to link it in the comments or just check out Tyler's Twitter because it's on there. What is it called, Tyler? The thing? Because I don't want to say the wrong name. Pinned post on my Twitter, the Fantasy Content Creator Awards. Go vote for one of your favorite content creators um, that you love. Please vote me for best Twitter. Uh, vote Nick for best YouTube. Obviously, you're watching this video. You might as well um, vote Nick for best Twitter. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, again, pin post in my Twitter, Tyler Moss NFL, or you can go to the link. Hopefully, in Nick's uh, either in Nick's comment section because I'll slap it there and he'll pin it, or in his uh, bio that description the, thingy. Description, yeah. There you go. I'm an idiot. Um, but yeah, please go check that out. Go vote for us. That'd mean a lot. Very nice. Make sure you guys do that. Have a great rest of your guys' day. More draft content coming later. I love you all. As always, good boy.